All right, well, let's get started. Um, well, I see we just have Patricia join too. So, um, I'm going to, I'll start with a little introduction. My name is Dave Fisher. I am a member of the Apache Software Foundation. And for a while last year, I was a member of the board of directors. I'm a vice president of a project called Apache Petrie, which is a place, uh, an experimental place where um, we're hoping to onboard uh, existing communities to consider whether they want to join the foundation and become an Apache project. I am a mentor in the incubator and I have uh, several um, podlings I'm mentoring right now. Um, and I'm a PN. PMC member of uh, several projects, including some that I, I mentored in the incubator and also open office and uh, also a project called POI, which is uh, the project I started working on uh, where I became a contributor and a committer and a PMC member the first time. Uh, I used uh, Apache uh, projects for I guess about 18 years when we used Tomcat and HTTPD uh, and uh, I've worked on uh, projects with Adobe Experience Manager which is based on the troika of Sling, Jackrabbit, Felix, etc. and done a lot with uh, uh, content with POI and PDF Box and XML graphics. So the topics for today, I'm going to talk about open office web resources that are on the apache.org and openoffice.org domains. Uh, there'll be a series of links and pictures. And then I'm going to talk about how openoffice.org website is organized uh, and discuss um, you know, some approaches to converting from the Apache CMS uh, to uh, some other uh, system, and I think there's some some choices we can make that are fairly straightforward. Uh, so here's the tour and links. So first place is the project website, and uh, this is at the usual location of projectname.apache.org, and it looks like this. This one also has to be converted from the CMS, but it's a much easier situation. It's a rather simple layout. Then there's our user portal, openoffice.org, where there's uh, many languages, etc. So um, here's an example of uh, Polish. Uh, so this is the site. So we see we handle translations uh, and um, including on the navigation and the branding, et cetera. It's very straightforward, uh, but under the hood, it's a little more complicated. And we'll get to that towards the middle. Um, we have Y pages, which also um, can be translated in different languages. You see, we start to have uh, an option for left navigation. Um, and uh, we have a uh, you know, some older content, uh, which um, we can talk about refreshing in the project. Uh, we have a project blog, which is hosted um, using an Apache roller instance, and we're using the full uh, foundations blog, and we have our own blog within that. So um, this is the address, and it has our older uh, from incubation um, uh, code. Uh, and this is where we occasionally publish things. Uh, we have a planning wiki, which is on a Confluence wiki, which is supported by um, Apache infrastructure. And it um, 
is, um, you know, we, we also have another one, but we won't go into that. We don't, I don't think we use it. This is sort of where we, you know, do various things and planning and, and create documents to, to, to help us figure out what we want to do. Um, there are some interesting comments on the bottom of this page uh, about tend to be around language. So, and I know Mactilda spoke about that yesterday. Um, we have user forums. So this is sort of a sub community uh, of people who have been supporting user questions for uh, well over a decade. And uh, there's a few different languages here. Um, there's a couple that there, there's a couple that are turned off, like Vietnamese is turned off, but where there's still support from the forum administrators, the the um, sites are available and they're very active and this is, you know, a place to go. Um, but we as a project maintain uh, the VM where this lives. So uh, this is an area where, you know, we could use a little sysadmin help. Uh, Bugzilla, uh, the, our Bugzilla database is hosted on the um, main Apache Bugzilla instance, uh, and um, the admin, most of the admin work is handled for us in terms of um, of issues. But there are a few people on the team that help with um, you know maintaining the IDs, etc. And this is a um, nice. Uh, older style system, but it has all the bugs. We have a media wiki, uh, which uh, contains uh, information uh, that's um, existed for quite some time. Uh, and this is also on a VM, which the project maintains um, that uh, Infra hosts for us. Uh, and uh, you can see it's a little bit of an older style layout, but um, it's here. Uh, volunteers are welcome to work on this as well. Um, we have an extension site, which we maintain for the community. And um, there's uh, the overall open off our office document uh, format community. So extensions from, say, LibreOffice uh, may be found here as well. Uh, this is uh, not hosted by us, uh, but hosted uh, by SourceForge for us. It's a Drupal-based site. Uh, but if people have problems with uh, the site, we can usually help, and we can do some uh, level of administration on the content. And so uh, you can go to you know, our dev site, our dev uh, mailing list to ask questions about it, or if you have a, sort of a private question, you can ask the private list. Uh, similarly, there's a template site, which is also Drupal based um, on um, SourceForge. A uh, note about downloads. Uh, this is our typical download location. This is where you'll you get the latest release and you can choose your operating system or language. Uh, you know, there's our community builds are uh, rather large and cover uh, four different uh, OS formats um, from, um, you know, we have Linux and RPM and Deb, uh, Mac and Windows. And uh, I think right now it's 41 languages for localization and language pack and full installation. So uh, you can do the math. That's I think some like 4,000 some uh, files. So the distribution network, uh, we don't use uh, the Apache mirror system uh, for historical reasons. Uh, you know, nine years ago, when we were starting out in the incubation, in incubation, it was realized that um, the size of the down number of files that would have to be replicated to all the mirrors would take uh, well too much time and take up too much space on the mirrors. So uh, we were allowed to make uh, relation uh, have a relationship with SourceForge, 
and uh, they uh, mirror and provide a mirror network for our downloads. Um, we also are on the, um, uh, as every Apache project has to have their, um, uh, their distributions, their releases on the um, Apache server, which has been recently renamed downloads.apache.org. So you can find the most current release there as well. Uh, there are archives um, automatically created um, and that's um, the location uh, here. Now there are even older archives from the incubation which are in, also in the archive in a different location uh, within the incubators section and I was looking around there and there are some release materials that go back to the beginning of open office if you want to look for ancient versions and see how they work you can you can uh, dig around on that site at this URL. Uh, we have an update service. Uh, currently that's hosted with the rest of the TLPs, but we're going to uh, move it um, so that we can um, uh, open it up so that, uh, that we have a bug right now where there's certain versions of uh, Apache OpenOffice that do not find the update service. They don't uh, speak quite the right version of SSL. Uh, these statistics are were, were taken a, a couple months ago for a 30-day period, and this shows, you know, the um, uh, requests that came through uh, to the update service. So we can see that we had a million, 1.1 million. Uh, Mac OS X requests from these versions of software. So this gives a sense of uh, that most people on the Mac are on 4.1.7, but there are a handful of people using rather old versions. Uh, we can even see free PSD coming through. They seem to be all in recent versions. Uh, Linux, uh, you can see that there's definitely some, um, there's not a lot of users or um, more likely uh, problems with the access. Uh, Windows, again, um, it's an interesting distribution. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it means, but we do actually see some of our uh, um, development uh, builds that are actually making requests. Um, so this is, this is an interesting little experiment as we uh, plan for the next release. We plan to make sure that that release um, gets visibility through this service. Uh, mailing lists. Um, probably the best way to go and look at the mailing lists in the archives now is to use um, uh, what's called Pony Mail. Um, and um, it's at list.apache.org. And if you go to this URL, then you can uh, see the screen, see the recent emails, and you can get access to all of our lists. I think an important one is L10N, which is for language translations. And then there's just several uh, smaller lists for uh, different user groups in different languages. Um, I know um, Keith and I were talking yesterday that perhaps we ought to consider um, um, uh, turning off a few of these lists and directing more traffic to dev. Um, something to talk about. Okay, now for the website templates. So we, the system that, that we use um, is the Apache CMS, which has been deprecated for a number of years, so we need to move off. But one of the key things we do uh, to manage things so that um, we can make easily make changes without having to recreate a lot of uh, files uh, is um, we use server-side includes. So you can see these in this template where we have like even an include for the doc type. Um, we also have um, 
parameters that come in uh, from the headers, like the title of the page and, and various things. And some decisions are made uh, based on um, what's, what's available on that page so that you can, you know, especially indicate uh, various um, style sheets, etc. Um, this is like, if we're going to turn off Google Analytics, we would, all we would need to do is remove this line, but then we would need, need to regenerate uh, everything. Uh, the other thing would do would be to empty this file. Um, we've got, um, you know, top navigation, which if it's present is included. And we also have some pages that have left nav and somewhere there are some pages with right navigation. So we put those in. Um, we uh, are, have breadcrumb capability, which we'll have to emulate. Uh, so you can, oops. And um, so it's, it's really, you can see it's a, a basic um, setup. Um, these are um, just various sections that can come in. The block stuff means something to the CMS. Uh, but uh, as we go to a new uh, build, uh, we can transform this as appropriate for whatever system we decide to use. Um, so for instance, server-side includes are specified um, and they point to different HTML files. And then this is how we would like um, do Russian and the Russian branding would come in in, a, in a, its own location. Um, and similar with the top navigation, uh, those are in the content tree, but you can kind of see that this is, um, while it was, it's marked down, we're only using attributes here. So as we move forward, uh, we can instead uh, make use of something like YAML or, you know, something a little more modern um, than what we were doing before. Um, you know, it kind of looks sort of like YAML. So we can do that and get some structure. Um, website brand, this is a, a, a section of the branding uh, page. And um, you can see up here, there's a lot of language selection and then there's various um, ways it comes in. Uh, you know, pull in a header name, the choice of the logo. So we can do, you know, a customized logo for, for celebrating something. Um, and, you know, just various pieces here. Uh, so here's an example of, of different brands, um, you know, the name, what language is selected in the language box, uh, the tagline, um, you can see that's not translated here. Um, but if you remember the Polish uh, view, that was translated. So it's, it's up to the, uh, the native translation, native team, language team to decide how they want to translate these files. Um, but you can see it's it's rather convenient. We have a couple of places, like for example, we can we could choose different CSS with this div uh, if it makes sense for the particular site. Um, here's an example of what the, the MB text looks like for the top nav. So you can see that in this case, it's actually marked down where we're actually specifying a number of links and we're specifying the, C the CSS that gets used to um, create this. And these are the tool tips and the link. So this is, this is the main one. Um, and then this is uh, an example from the German site. So one of the things we could talk about here is if we wanted to have some other uh, structure besides Markdown for this, have this maybe all in YAML and, and then whether that makes more sense for uh, translation or not. Um, I, I 
you know, like I'd love to discuss, you know, what works best for the native language teams. Um, well, that's the end of this part of the slideshow. So uh, I'm going to have to, okay, this, so this came through, um, but hold on a second. I've got this screen that's doing a funny thing. Kind of lost my whole laptop screen right beforehand for some reason. It went to full screen mode, mode and it got stuck. So um, I'm going to share this this screen and, um, and then I'm going to look at I can look at some pages. So here I'm more, I'm in the template area. Um, and this is, so this is the brand page. I mean, the, so this does the top of the window. So you can see all the languages uh, and there's a little script inserted here. And then um, the banner section That's important, unfortunate. Okay, so, and then this is the, the main page. GC is very simple, so. Um, This is the whole templates directory um, that currently exists. You can see there's just little sections for each thing that just have that SSI. So we can, obviously there's ways to simplify this kind of thing. So that some of these things are exceptionally simple. They just bring things through. These are just a common footer for everything. Um, let's see, this is how we get like the Apache kind of on the bottom of our page. Um, and you know, the basic, basic things. Um, and see the, the HTML page extends that skeleton, um, but you know, does some wrapping. What I'm doing with all the HTML content is it basically there's a, a, a view that extracts um, uh, the body and it extracts anything that's in the that's a, on the body tag, which was important. Um, so these are the basically these are the two special uh, maps that are part of the CMS, where we can see that these are our template um, choices. Uh, other systems will have a, an attribute um, in the top of the file that chooses what template uh, is used. Um, so uh, depending on what we choose, uh, these things can be uh, appropriately dealt with with scripting as we convert. Um, the So, you know, here, just selecting the SSI file, according to which one's you know, the deepest item, there's uh, working out the breadcrumbs. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that was buried in the CMS and how it does things. It just really, we just need to find a modern way to 
to do those things. So we're an HTML page. I'm writing the script and you can see I'm doing there's some stuff going on. And then you pass it in. But um this is um and in dot htm pages exist as well. Um, let me go to this. Does anyone have any questions? They want to type in. I can show you, Carl, since you're with us, I'm going to show you um, one page. It'll take a second to find. OK, for, for example, Incubator uses something called uh, JBay. And JBay has its um, um, templates are done in Groovy. So, for example, using an XML slurper or whatever. So that's one, one, one thing we could do is decide that we're going to do our templating based on uh, Groovy and doing extraction and stuff like that using Java code uh, to manipulate the files. Um, it's to, you know, different kinds of things, like there's a, we have a project page in the incubator. So you can see that's rather complicated. We could do something similar with SSIs. Um, we go here in the pages. This is where I JBank, you know, this is how they kind of do things. This is, they use this ASCII doctor instead of Markdown, but I believe you can also use Markdown with this. But um, this one doesn't have the template. Oh, it's JBank type is the template. So this is the template, is the homepage template. One of the things that's not so great about JBake is it kind of reviews all the files uh, every time you build. So that can be kind of slow, um, but that's what it is. Now, somewhere on one of my screens, I've got another possibility that people suggested is Hugo. This is using you know, Go, it's, et cetera, to do things. I'm not as familiar with this, but um, it could be, you know, a reasonable uh, view. They have page variables and site variables, which are kind of what we're doing with SSI. and see similar language with the double squiggly brackets. Okay, so there's a pub.
Yeah, I can I can visit the pub later. Um, oh, we get new people. Welcome. Kind of uh, towards the end here. Um, I'm looking for some questions, maybe. Let's um I'll just go back. Do a quick just a quick review since we had new people enter. We reviewed uh, just a series of links, native language, this conversion that can happen so you can still use the subdomains so you end up over here. The Y pages that have navigation. Our blogs, planning wiki, user forums, which we maintain the VM for, and there's a team. Bugzilla, the wiki, which we also maintain the VM for. Um, extensions, templates, uh, downloads, um, and then where the, dist the distribution network that we're using source for, which mirrors. Um, and then the, uh, our, our recent release is always here. And then there's archives of our releases, the top level project, then older archives in the incubator, including from before incubation. Um, I don't know how complete they are, but they're there. Um, the update service, which we're, um, which after we release 4.1.8 should be, um, activated so that uh, we can now properly connect to it. This is what can connect now. Um, this is the 30 day time period earlier. Um, the mailing lists. And then I went through the templating code and the SSI and how that's, you know, similar to um, what we have Here. With all the server side includes we use. So that's just the review. Um, I'm interested if anyone has any any questions? Um, okay, so um, you look, Pedro's looking for a guide to how to commit to Apache Open Office. Hopefully this is updated. Yep.
Does that work for you? Any, any other questions? Any? By Matilda, by basics, do you mean subversion basics? Do you mean how to use subversion or how to use subversion with open office? Carl, isn't isn't that kind of isn't that this page or is it something else? The README for the Git has instructions, but it refers back to source, right? So maybe that needs to be better. And the building probably should um, um, include more from the project wiki.
great to see the conversation. Um, we're, we're at time with the talk. Um, Y'all going to the pub later? Let me find that URL. All right, everyone, thanks for joining. Have a good day.